get ready for a rocky ride. We're headed into the Arizona desert, a place so unforgiving, even in winter, it can be deadly. Our guide is nationally known survival expert, Cody Lundeen, and we'll be joined by wilderness instructor, Jay Beal. Our mission, to learn how to survive here and anywhere else. The biggest way to die in the outdoors is, is that people die of exposure. The landscape is beautiful, but the desert can be a killer, especially in summer. Uh, a few years ago, it was about 120 degrees, 122 degrees. That means the ground temperature right here through conduction, um, this could easily be 140, 150 degrees on the ground. So that's hot. Luckily, there is plenty of water nearby, a stream fed by winter storms. Lack of water can kill you in an hour or so in the desert, although your first concern is to avoid panic and make a plan to survive. Our plan is to head out into the backcountry on foot, and now we're ready for anything. Watch where you're stepping. Okay, there's rattlesnakes out here, there's scorpions, there's things that, that uh, um, you don't want to have any part of, and they don't want to have any part of you. Nothing that here is out to get you, but you have to pay attention to where you are. <laughs> For the trail, I've brought my sturdiest hiking boots. Cody walks barefoot, as the Aboriginal people did here thousands of years ago. You can still see signs of their culture here, scrawled in the rock. They were the first survivors. We're practicing one of their ancient arts, making a cutting edge from river rocks, and trying not to break my thumb in the process. Excellent. Look at that whopper blade. That's a nice knife. So you would take this and do what? Skin fish, manipulate wood to make fire, cut pieces of cordage, process yucca. Yucca leaves can be pounded, scraped, and washed to produce string-like fibers that can be wound into a strong rope. And we could pull your truck out of the ditch. But if you're stuck for the night here, you'll need heat. The warm desert afternoon will soon turn to a frozen night and will need some way to stay warm. Our quest for fire begins with a nearly impossible search for a straight piece of wood. Not to burn, but for a bow drill to start a fire. It doesn't get much straighter than that. Then put together dried bark as a kind of base for your fire. Looks like a bird's nest. Right. So here's a basic tinder bundle. Grab your bow and drill, place the drill in the fireboard beneath your foot, add pressure from above and get working. Remember, you can do without food for weeks. You can go without water for days. But shelter and warmth can make the difference between life and death within hours. Cody makes the fire building process look easy. There's fire with sticks. It's so simple anybody can do it with the right tools and a little bit of know-how. You can blow a teeny bit harder, but even breaths. There. There's fire. It comes just in time to see the last of the sun, and as it falls, so does the temperature. The fire warms the body and the spirit. <laughs> Cody says survival is not a game. It's a struggle, and it's cooperation with your companions, not competition. Those skills are valuable for everyone. It's a common base we can relate to, not to mention that your body's 98.6 and so is mine, and if it gets compromised, we die another thing we have in common. So it's base knowledge that'll never go out of style as long as we're on a physical planet. In the Arizona desert, Jim Otte, New Center 7.